we go from here. Um, so I, I'll just call on people to introduce themselves. So um, I'm Paul Bachelman, town manager. Um, I'll go to Mike. Sure, I'm Mike Morris, superintendent of schools. And why don't I call on the next person then at the end of your introduction, you get to call on wherever you like. I like that. So why don't I go to Steve? To me? Yeah. I'm Steve Schreiber. I'm the counselor from District 4. And my, uh, my other job is I'm the uh, professor and chair of architecture at UMass. And I'll call on Kathy Shane. Thank you, Steve. I'm also a counselor. I'm a counselor from District 1, and I'm on the Finance Committee. So we picked two counselors. One had to come from the Finance Committee. Who do you choose, Kathy? Ah, I'll pick Sean. This is fun. I am Sean Mangano. I'm the Director of Finance for the Towns, and I served on this type of committee last time around for Wildwood. Um, I will call on Ben. Hello, I'm Ben, and I'm here as the representative of the school committee, and I'm also the assistant facilities director for ARPS. And with that, I'll call on Rupert Roy Clark. Hi, um, I'm Rupert. I'm the facilities director for the schools. Who are you going to call on, Rupert? I'm going to call on Allison. Hi, I'm Allison Estes. I'm the assistant um, assistant principal at Wildwood Elementary School, and I will call on Phoebe. Hi, I'm Phoebe Merriam. I don't have a school job. Um, I'm a parent. I live here in Amherst, um, and I'm, you know, happy to be here and excited to join you guys. Um, Diane. Good morning. I'm Diane Chamberlain, principal at Fort River School. Jonathan. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Jonathan Salvan. I'm a parent of two children at uh, Fort River, um, and I served on the Fort River uh, Study Committee. And I will uh, pick on Anthony. Anthony Delaney, Procurement Officer, and I think last. I think that's it. So the one person who isn't here is Wayne Chamble, uh, but I'm hopefully he'll join in. Um, oh, we are recording, good. And Anthony, can I make you co-host, right? Yep. Just in case anything happens, there's somebody else who is at the controls. Um, and we do have some audience members. So uh, the first thing we'd like, I'd like to do is see if there's any um, public comment. Usually we reserve public comment no more than three minutes. Um, so let's, it, receive some, if anybody has any public comment, please raise your hand and we'll bring you in. And seeing none, oh, we have one, or no? Yes, Irene, would you like to you can raise your hand? Please unmute yourself and you have three minutes. Yes, um, my name is Irene Duhovne. Um I serve with Jonathan and Anthony in the uh, for Rivers Feasibility Stability. I would urge you, I see that you are recording, I would urge you to make um, these recordings public um, so that everybody has access to the, to the meetings. Thank you for your comment. I'll let you manage that, Anthony, if you can. Um, no so, the next, so, so um, I just want to, I'm wondering how many people um, have been able to get sworn in. It's, I know that it's been tough with the town clerk's office. Sometimes they've dissuaded people because they're just swamped with the election. So, um, but I know that a number of people who who has been, uh, who has not been who has you been sworn in? Yes. And who's, you know, Kathy I know hasn't, Allison has not, so, and I'm not sure, and Ben has not. So we have some who have not been um, torn in. So, um, so what I would suggest then, one of, our, one of our topics is to um, elect a chair and vice chair, and maybe we hold that to the next meeting when everybody has had an opportunity to be sworn in, and we can make that call at the next meeting. Um, and 
Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is just give an overview of the MSBA process, and Mike is going to walk through that a little bit. Yeah, um, I'm just going to share my screen, if that's okay with you, Paul and Anthony, um, to show some of, um, let me make sure I have the right screen up. Hold on one second. Um, now I should be able to do it. Um, can folks see that, uh, yeah. especially the graphic in the middle? So this is from the MSBA website, and this describes uh, the process that they um, they work with districts. So uh, to start with, MSBA is sort of a quasi-public agency. They are funded from tax dollars. Um, in the most recent Student Opportunity Act that passed last year, they were gonna have an additional $250 million, I believe, in, in funding. Uh, candidly, we all don't know exactly where the Student Opportunity Act funding sits, given the current status of the world and, and funding in Massachusetts. But in general, they're funded from um, tax dollars as per statute. Uh, there's a very competitive process that we, uh, many districts submit statements of interest because there's many districts in Massachusetts who need an upgrade of their facilities. I wanna thank, you know, Rupert in particular, Ben and others who worked on our statement of interest last year we were very fortunate to be accepted into the process most districts that apply are not accepted into the process also want to thank the school committee and the town council for voting to allow our application to go in because i'll be honest not every community supports um, the application because they know that the majority of the funding comes from the town not from the msba if a project actually goes through so we're fortunate i feel like to get in from that from uh, our application we're also fortunate to have elected officials who see the the needs in our elementary school buildings and who voted to support this process moving through. So the, I'll, I'll go through this uh, graphic from the MSBA website a little bit. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Hopefully that a little easier to read on people's screens. Um, so the things that are in blue are done by districts. Um, so that, that'd be us. Uh, the things that are in the greenish olive color are construction professionals. And so we are currently in the eligibility period. So at this point, we are in charge of all the work that is occurring. Um, so one of the things about the eligibility period is forming a building committee. We're here. Um, the district has communication with the MSBA on enrollment uh, and enrollment projections. As that process continues, you know, Paul's been involved, someone else from the town as well, looking at future uh, population growth in the community. Uh, as that pro process uh, kind of continues. We'll be sharing that. There's not really much to share at this point, but we'll be sharing that back uh, with the building committee. So you're aware of those discussions, those conversations and where MSBA is. Um, you know, at the end of the eligibility period, uh, the town council will need to vote to appropriate funds to get the project started. Um, and the MSBA will have to vote that we, they approve us to move on from the eligibility period into what's, what's called feasibility. Uh, the reason those votes have to take place is as a financial element. Once we start forming the project team, that's adding on owner project managers and architects uh, that um, are hired through a competitive process that we'll get into probably a meeting or two from now. Um, the owner project manager in particular, um, we would run that process ourselves. And so uh, because there's a financial element, there needs to be votes that the district and the town are ready to move forward with that. Um, that process. Um, so once we have our owner project manager who really helps us manage the project and our architects who help design it and they come with a bunch of consultants along with them, we start on a feasibility study. Feasibility study is what it sounds like. You're looking at multiple options, trying to understand, you know, what should we study, what, uh, what you know, we'll have the enrollment at that point. Uh, we'll work dynamically with architects and owner project managers about site information, design information, um, you know, Amherst being a green community, how we want to approach the net zero bylaw, all those things go into a feasibility study. The end of the feasibility study is a major report that's presented and voted by the committee uh, and then, then brought to the MSBA that looks at multiple options um, to study. At that point, the committee um, will uh, have to have lots of discussion and community outreach to, should be part of all of these work to identify a specific scheme or design that it wants to pursue in more detail. Feasibility study is still where there's boxes on a page. 
right, that are that are more or less interchangeable. That may be overstating it, but but it's been explained to me that way by architects. At schematic design, you're getting much more specific on what this building actually looks like, how exactly it sits in the land. We have a lot more um, tests of the land of, um, you know, it, it's getting down to a more narrow uh, slice, both of, you know, what we're planning to do, as well as what the design looks like. Still not at the construction design document level, like they're not designs that you could give to an architect, say, I mean, to a construction company and say, go. Um, but it's a lot more specific than the feasibility study. Um, I'm going to stop here because I've, I've been talking a lot and see if there's questions in the first half. There's a reason why this uh, visual is designed with the top half and the bottom half of the process, uh, which I'll get into in a second. But I thought, you know, I would pause here and see if there's questions from the committee on what I've shared to date. And if people who know more than me, like Rupert Ben, uh, Jonathan about construction and others. Steve, uh, if there's anything I'm saying that you would disagree with, now's a great time. I'm very open to divergent opinions on things. Uh, so if, if there's something, as those of you know me well, I don't always have the right language for this stuff. My wife can tell you in great detail my inability to solve simple problems in our home. Um, but if there are um, any questions people have, I want to pause and see if we have any. Kathy, you had a question. Uh, yeah, Mike, it's not a question so much about what you just described, but just some sense of timing on uh, the project team, how long to that point to the feasibility study to the schematic design, uh, that first, uh, that middle row. Mm -hmm. It's a great question. So uh, what I can tell you is what's typical, not necessarily what will happen here. Uh, the form in the project team, that's a, that's a bid process. So legally that's gonna take longer than people think it'll take because um, it has to be posted in, I don't know, I don't have the right words, but it has to be publicly posted. Um, we have to solicit bids. Uh, we have to, the, there'll be likely a subcommittee of this group uh, that will look at those and uh, shortlist people to interview. There's an interview process that's um, a public process uh, or allows for some, some nature of that, of public uh, input. Uh, at the end of that, there's a selection, there's contract negotiations, and then we redo that same thing for the designer, for the architect. So those processes are not week-long processes. They're, they generally take, you know, I would say six to eight weeks from start to finish in terms of putting it out, getting bids, um, getting proposals, excuse me, um, interviewing, shortlisting, finalist contract negotiation. Um, I think all in all, when you look at eligibility period to end of schematic design, what I've seen most frequently is about two years. Um, as, a, as a rough estimate, you know, some districts are able and towns are able to go quicker. Uh, many are able to need more time. Um, you know, and again, people in the field can definitely correct me if that, that feels like an incorrect estimate, but uh, that's what I've seen in terms of um, some other districts, how long they've taken. I don't know if Rupert, Ben, Steve, Jonathan, if you have anything that you'd want to add to that, my rough timeline of, of how long that would take. Seeing no input, I'm assuming dangerous to take that as consent, but I think for now I will. Um, uh, you know, um, but, but, you know, all of these things, um, you know, there, there's, I feel great urgency. Many of you have heard me say that many times over the last five, six years and uh, rushing a process and ending with a result that doesn't have broad community buy-in um, and our, our ability to make changes throughout uh, is really critical. So it's always balancing the urgency with making sure you get it right. That, that's how I sort of frame it. Does that help answer it, Kathy? Yes, thank you. Other questions anyone who has? So what I'm not being as explicit about uh, is that there's multiple stop points. Kathy's question was a great uh, prompt for this, that um, we have to vote as a body, um, but actually MSBA has to vote for to advance us to the next phase. So even at the designer, who hires a designer? Um, OPM, the owner project manager, is all done by this committee. There are three representatives of this committee who drive to Boston. Well, I don't know. We'll see what world we're in in the future, but it might be virtual. And the interviews for the designer occur with three representatives of the building committee, and then the rest of the voters are representatives, or MSBA either employees or board members. 
um, I believe board member, um, but definitely employees. So even that process is not, not purely our own and, and the stop points of the end of feasibility study and the end of schematic design involve approval, uh, presentations and approvals uh, from the MSBA. Um, so that, that's something else that takes some time. The board meets uh, roughly every other month. So some of it you lose time just because of when you get on the calendar. Um, so uh, there's other points that, that take more time that aren't just because of our own doing or time we need, but we need to get approval from MSBA and we need to get on their um, either a subcommittee calendar or their full bullet board calendar, depending on the submission. Then we get to funding the project. So uh, typically the way it would work is the MSBA um, agrees to fund their share of the project. Um, you know, in general for our district, like last time, it's in the neighborhood of half of the cost. Um, so that's a lot of money. And they're gonna take their time evaluating every single part of the project before they put their stamp uh, and their commitment for funding. Uh, and the same thing will happen locally. However, you know, that'll be a local decision that's made uh, from the community uh, to vote it, whether that's an override or not an override, will be up to the town, um, to just the town elected officials to decide. But at one hand or another, it's going to need votes of the community, either elected officials or elected officials plus the general populace to fund the project. Uh, at that point, if it's funded both at the commitments made at the MSBA level and at the community level, uh, the architects get into detailed design, which is creating design documents that construction firms can, can actually utilize. Uh, the construction process, again, generally takes in the neighborhood of a year and a half to three years, depending, you know, how complex the construction process is. And completing the project is also a critical piece that there's, um, there's evaluation at the tail end and commissioning and, and all that work that's less public, but still matters. So all in all, building committees, you know, take, you know, can take upwards of six years because they may continue to meet after the kids are in the, and adults are in the building because there is, there are work, there is work that's occurring even after that time frame, particularly in our project, which will likely have an intensive focus on energy efficiency. Um, you can design all you want and then you want to test it and evaluate how it is, how it's going uh, after the building's actually being used because, you know, we'll notice a change in energy efficiency from a, a shiny building or a shiny renovated building that no one's in versus the actual use um, by, by uh, human beings on a regular basis will affect the efficiency there. So that's sort of, you know, again, the nuts and bolts of the process. Um, you know, I would encourage people, the, the website is massschoolbuildings.org. Uh, it's a really helpful resource. You could look at other projects that are in, you know, in design, that have been approved, that are completed. Uh, there's a treasure trove of resources around that. It'll go into each module which describe all of these rectangles in much more detail than I did today. Um, so, you know, at this point, it's a quieter period. Um, eligibility part, we will need, again, uh, to identify a cost to the feasibility study that will need to be voted uh, at the town level. Um, we have enrollment work that's occurring, and this, this, this building committee needs to, con you know, start meeting um, not as frequently as we will once we get into the, into the project. Those are really the key points of the eligibility, but once we hire an owner project manager and a designer, everything starts accelerating very, very quickly. Um, so just to, to foreshadow that for the committee, it may be the first couple of meetings feel a little bit like this one, uh, where we're having some general high level conversations. Um, but the reason we're doing that is once, we're, once we start going, um, I know from last time and from other districts, it feels like we're going pretty quick. Um, so I wanted to just foreshadow that for everyone in the group. Uh, as well as for the public uh, who, who may have an interest in knowing about the pacing and and it's not linear that i can assure you on um, the process so i think with that unless there's further questions i'll hand it back to paul um but you know please feel free you know and paul and i are sort of co-chairing at the point at this moment until we get everybody um sworn in and we can take a vote if there are questions in between you know my email address is morrisam at arps.org. Please feel free to email me anytime if you want to have a conversation, which is generally my preference these days. Um, you know, please let me know. I'm happy to share. You know, from my experience, I won't speak for the committee. That's not my role. But but if there are specific questions I can help with, please do access me. I'm happy to to do whatever orientation uh, anyone would need uh, as we kind of slowly enter this process. Great. Thanks, Mike. Are there questions for Mike on this? So. So far, great. Thanks, Mike. I also want to recognize uh, Dwayne has joined us. Welcome. 
Do you, uh, we, so we introduced ourselves, Dwayne. Do you want to take a minute to sort of introduce yourself? Yes, everybody can hear me? Good morning. Hello, everybody. I'm Dwayne Chamble. Um, I'm the out of school time coordinator for the district, and I am happy to be here. And I do apologize, everybody, for being late. I don't know why my eyes were seeing PM and not AM. So <laughs> and thank you for emailing. I'm like, oh my God, Paul. So I apologize. Good morning, everybody. Bye. It's fine. It's good. Thanks for making the effort to get in. Um, also, you know, we didn't, I just want to, I didn't, should have done this earlier, but I want to thank you all for stepping forward and taking the time. Um, appreciate meeting at this hour. Um, I, we, this committee can decide if it wants to continue meeting at this hour or not. Um, but it's, you know, this is, it's been a long wait to get to this point. Um, uh, we're on a long journey and, um, you know, Mike just talked about what the journey looks like and it's, you know, we all want to get to the ribbon cutting, but that's a long ways away, <laughs> many years away. Um, but this journey, you know, this is a really important task for the town. It's, it's something that's the town has needed for a very, very long time. And, and it's so exciting to get started. And this is, and you're the tangible evidence that we're moving forward. So thanks for that. It's going to take a lot of work, you know, big commitment, a lot of education of ourselves. Some people have been through it, others have not. And, um, and I think, you know, one of the key things is that there are no dumb questions and always ask the questions that you feel like you need. Your jobs, our jobs are to represent um, the public in this process. The MSBA has a very um, strict um, process that they follow because they're putting in the bulk of a large portion of the money in this project. And they want certain types of um, skill sets on the committee and, and we are fulfilling those, you know, procurement, architect, finance, um, members of the public, things like that. So I think we have a really broad based, very strong committee. So I'm really proud of this, this group. Um, so as we move forward, again, um, we all will have our roles, but we'll be um, ha having an own owner's project manager who's really gonna help us manage through this process. Um, where it's not gonna all be on us. Um, we are going to need to have someone who's done this a lot of times um, move forward with us. Um, so I guess there's just some um, logistical things on terms of when we would like to meet, um, what time of day works. You know, Mike and I talked a little bit about this and we think that our next meeting could be in about a month. That'll take us, it'll take us that time uh, before we have another, you know, ready to go with the next phase of things. Um, so maybe like you know, either right before Thanksgiving or right after Thanksgiving. Um, and I'm, I'm looking for people's interest. If you, we had advertised that the, these meetings would be at 730 in the morning to accommodate people's schedules and whether that actually works or not. <laughs> and now that we're doing it, <laughs> we can raise our hands and say that was a bad idea. Um, people want to chime in and see what they think. Just jump, if people should. Mind. I yeah, like I it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I like it. Yeah, I'll just share that the 730 came from two places in my conversation with Paul, and some of this was based on our experience at the last time. So we have a number of school staff members involved, and, you know, if meetings were during, to occur during the workday, um, it, it complicates um, a lot of things for, for staff, and we want their input. Um, I think the second thing was, uh, for a lot of working families, last time it was hard um, to do it in the kind of late afternoon or evening. Uh, there's no perfect time, but, you know, polling some people from uh, who are in the last group, just informally, um, it, it seemed like if we could do these meetings uh, frequently, efficiently, um, and in a time-limited way, that worked well. There are a number of other communities we've heard from architects we've worked with who, who do like this, you know, before people head off to work. Um, you know, many of us on the school side and many of you on the family side have childcare responsibilities in the evening um, or work responsibilities in the evening. And uh, I'll be candid, you get to a certain point of night, uh, as I'll be at tonight. Uh, and sometimes the efficiency of uh, how we're doing doesn't improve with uh, as, as the sun goes down. So we're thinking maybe as the sun goes up might work better for us, we'll see. But um, that was the thinking, that's not to suggest that uh, I'm not open or we're not open to divergent opinions, but it wasn't just, you know, uh, 
throw times on the stairs and see which one you know makes it to the top stair. It was uh, done really thinking about uh, some of the challenges that people experienced the last time and people routinely experience with late afternoon or early evening meetings. Um, so th that was sort of the thinking. It could be wrong-headed thinking, but uh, it was it was at least uh, it tried to take into account feedback we were hearing. Phoebe, does it work okay for you? It actually does. Uh, it's probably the best time of <laughs> the day between work and three kids and everything else. So, yeah. And Alice and Diane, it's your schedules? Okay. Okay. So why don't we, uh, is there, you know, let's, let's stay with the 7.30 a.m. Um, let's look at a, you know, I, I think that we're best off looking at, um, you know, I, I think we might, Next next meeting, one of our agenda items will be to elect a chair and vice chair. Another one will to come up with a meeting schedule. So next next time we meet, we'll want to you know be talking about frequency of meetings and how you know if it's going to be every month for three months and then biweekly after that or something like that. And Mike and I can sort of um, sketch out what that might look like based on other people's experiences. Um, yeah, and um, so maybe we should just look at a calendar and see when we can meet again. And Mike, your your guidance on how 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 soon we should meet is would be welcome. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think like you said before, either before Thanksgiving, maybe the week before or the week after, makes a lot of sense. At that point, hopefully, we're you know a little further along with hearing from MSBA from an enrollment perspective. We can share that back with the committee at that point. Probably the town council will have to schedule um, their process for voting, you know, and appropriating funds, um, you know, which the MSBA will guide us in that. They're really a wonderful partner in my experience. Um, I'm not sure how much need there is to meet in between, you know, those two. Uh, you know, we're trying to be respectful of everyone's time. We know, you know, just bluntly, this is a very stressful time for everyone in the room. Um, you know, with everything that's going on. So we want to meet when we have some substance to meet about, not meet for the sake of, of meeting. Um, I don't think people would be thrilled to have 7.30 meetings where we talk for 20 minutes and say, yeah, no updates to give. You know, uh, I, I'm not sure how satisfying that will be to the groups. So yeah, I'm, that, that is sort of, you know, I think that time frame works pretty well. Um, I don't know which morning of the week, you know, and that maybe that'd be, um good to get some feedback um on um but um that's that's sort of uh where how i see it anyway so i'll, I'll throw a date out there what about wednesday december 2nd since we're already here on a wednesday that's the week after thanksgiving yes yeah you know, i it's fine on my calendar paul i'm just um, you all know how much work we need to get done. Does that push us, I guess your other choice is Wednesday the 25th or the 18th of November. Um, does that push us off at all by waiting until December? I'd love to Mike for that. Yeah, I think uh, I, I tend to agree probably with Kathy. I mean, I'd rather probably meet in that time before Thanksgiving. I think if there's really no updates, we can always bail and say, hey, we're going to move it to December. But at least if we get it on the calendar and there are updates and, and more substance, then we're not, you know, I'd rather schedule it and cancel it than not schedule it and, and go too long, if that makes sense. So you want to look at the 18th? Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Okay. How's that look to everybody else? It's fine with, fine with me. See no net negative nod. So we'll look at November 18th at 7.30 p.m. a.m. a.m. going a.m. <laughs> I said p.m. Good. Um, and what other agenda items would we put on there? Again, Mike or Sean or somebody's been through this before. Answer. Yeah, hopefully at that point we'll have, a, we'll vote as you noted for, you know, chair and vice chair. That's just a plug for everyone to make sure that they get sworn in uh, by that date. Um, I think maybe we'll have some information on enrollment uh, projections from MSBA at that point in time. Um, you know, Mike, I, um, too early to draft a request for services? 
I think it is. I think the thing that we'll have to talk about at that meeting is trying to come up with an estimate uh, of cost of the feasibility study so that we can go back and forth with MSBA on that and then the town council because the town council will have to, the way our MSBA works is the towns or municipalities um, vote in the full dollar amount. So let's say the feasibility cost I'm just going to make it up because it's ridiculous and no one can claim later that I was predicting. Say it was $100 to do the feasibility, right? Then the town has to appropriate the $100 and then the MSBA reimburses whatever the percentage is back. Um, I think I'd probably work on that as a committee before we get the scope of services for the next steps because the scope of service is going to need whatever that dollar amount is. Um, does that make sense, Sean? Yeah. And you've been through this before, so I'll, I'll, I'll lean on you. Uh, this is fun for me doing that again. Um, I'll lean on you for um, for some thinking about, you know, potentially, and I'm happy to help. Um, looking at comps and what's in the market right now uh, in terms of cost of feasibility studies. But um, I do think that's something that, that we should talk about. And I do think actually it makes sense to do that in November to give the town council enough time to, to hear that recommendation and be able to act on it. Mm -hmm. I think um, yeah, I just had a question on coming up with that estimate, Mike, um, and conversations you're going to have with MSBA. We did a Wildwood study, and then we did the preliminary design and look at Fort River um, to, to figuring out to what extent some of that work will be considered by MSBA have, have already having done parts of it or do we have to redo some of that so it's a it's a question not a statement on it on a if we knew that some of it would count then it might affect the rough estimate of how much this round would cost us yeah so i'll make a statement in response actually but that's it's the right question to ask um you know we have had some preliminary conversations about that msba will not fund uh for the wildwood site uh, to work to be redone for work that was already completed that they contributed to. Um, the upside of that is we may not to do it, need to do as much work at the Wildwood site um, because work was done. Um, I think there's some savings there. I'm not an expert on this, but I, I think much, if you look at how we spend much of the money, it's not as much on some of the technical aspects. Uh, I'm going to look at Jonathan and others, uh, but a lot of the money is on design. Um, so I think there, there, you probably net some savings there. Uh, but the majority of the funds of the feasibility study aren't paying for sort of landscape architects to do the work that was already done or testing of soil that's already done. I'm not saying there's not cost. I'm not saying it doesn't cost real dollars. But, but I think much of the funds is going to kind of design the meetings, the feedback from this group that probably does need to be done independent of work that was already done. But uh, Jonathan, I'd hate to, to, to call on you, but, you know, you do this all the time. So um, I don't know if you have any thoughts about, you know, what we might yield in savings, not as a dollar amount, but just in general versus things that we, we'd want to have an architect at OPM be working with us on. I would agree with what you've said so far that, that things like borings um, and site investigation uh, should be very, from both prior uh, studies should be very reusable um, and that, Mike's right that that this study will mostly be about asking the designers to do additional design. I think MSBA is going to require uh, that work, even though both have been looked at in a, in a design way. They're going to require that to that part to be redone because really it's a different process. It's a more global process because that's going to look probably at both sites in a in a way that's different than the, the prior two times. Does that sound right to you, Mike? It does. Yeah, that's spot on. Thanks for giving me the language. <laughs> you know, again, this isn't my forte. Um, is there any, what else should we have on the agenda for the next meeting? Sean, did you have ideas? Well, I can connect with, um, you know, Mike and we can look at the estimates and see if there's, or at least do the preliminary research into what that might be. And I know MSBA is usually pretty good at also kind of giving us some direction about what they're seeing for feasibility studies and the costs. Um, so we can work on that for next time and see if that's ready to go. Is there anything else on our, we want to have on our agenda next, <clears throat> next time anybody wants to bring up? No, I don't see anything. So is there anything else anybody wants to bring up today? 
this is awesome. Um, I mean, th th this was intended, oh, Diane. Well, I'm just curious. I know that we have to appoint a chair, so I just wonder if we should poll, informally poll folks and see if anybody's actually interested in that role. Well, yeah, so we, we don't want to vote. <laughs> We don't want to vote uh, today because not everybody is able to vote because they haven't been sworn in. But I guess it's, if there are people who are interested, um, you know, you could express your interest either um, now or, um, you know, or, or prior to the meeting or at the meeting next time. I think it would make sense to review the responsibilities of the chair so everybody's aware. Okay. We can put something together like that. Basically, the, yeah, so that's good. That's a good thing to do, Allison. Good suggestion. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to talk about today? And everybody can make it on the 18th at 7.30. That's clear. That's good. Okay. So with that, uh, I think we can adjourn the meeting at 8, 11 a.m. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.